I'm doing it 30 seconds. I blew it. <laughs> I'm the highest bidder. 8,001. I think we just bought the boat. 10 seconds left. <laughs> oh, we made a big decision. <laughs> Little to no information. Zero seconds. Did we win? The wheel is spinning. We won! Yes. Oh no! <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> yes! This is my good friend Kelsey. He just bought a Hurricane Rex sailboat down in St. Thomas. Kelsey is one of those friends whom I do stupid thrill-seeking adventures with. And this may be the start to one of those adventures. Alright, so just got off the plane from Vancouver. Kelsey picked me up here. We're gonna go fix his boat up. He got a couple plugs put in his boat, so it apparently floats now. Should be good. Uh, oh yeah, so by the way, we're fixing his boat. It's a Vagabond 47. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna hopefully get it in the water by this week, maybe, and sail it to uh, Kokao, right? Is that how you say it? Curacao. Curacao. Oh. An ABC group. Near Venezuela. Oh, and that's it's a, gonna be warmer there. As a three-day sail? Uh, it's 500 miles. What's that in metric units? No idea. 500 nautical miles. I think those are international. Oh, okay. In boat nice. units. So this is this is St. Thomas. Hurricane came through here last year. Two. Cool. Two of them, and just destroyed everything. And also Kelsey's new boat, <laughs> which he bought after the hurricane. Man, they're honking. Oh yeah, the horns do. <laughs> rally it for no reason. That's that's your way. <laughs> People drive aggressively here, but they'll always let you in, and they'll always honk, like a friendly honk, not a like get the fuck up. So I've been looking for a dream boat. The dream boat would probably have two sticks, bowsprit, transom windows, and an aft cabin, and ideally no holes. But because of Hurricane Irma Maria, this boat has fallen off the stands, smashed up the inside, got all the electronics wet, and there's a whole bunch of holes in the hull. So this is gonna be home for the next three weeks or a month. Yeah. Lovely. Oh yeah. yeah up there, see if we can find any dolphins. This is where we're gonna find dolphins. Oh, it feels soft. Maybe it's just here. Is that supposed to be connected to anything? Yeah, yeah it's up in there. No dolphins. So we have a lot of work to do. Oh yeah, it looks like it's all been uh, chopped and cut, and then they, at least they flared it. It just looks like epoxy and failure, but they didn't actually, they didn't tape it yet. So I guess we gotta finish that up. Do that. Do that later, though. Yeah. We seem to get it seaworthy and floating. And you out of the hurricane zone. You've done most of that. Done some of it. There's one stanchion base over there. Oh yeah, you have no stanchions at all. And the other one is over there. We got two. Out of how many? A lot. Sixteen. Sixteen. Got the anchor. Man, this is a. Got a lot of, a lot of work ahead. And then you got a broken mizzen mast too, don't you? That's where she goes? Okay. Here's the knee knocker there, that boom. Under your feet. The knee knocker? Yeah, it's a stay sail boom. So you smash it into your knees every time you walk on the floor deck. Oh, it's for the jib. No, it's a stay sail. Stay sail. It's a baby jib. The want to be jib. Is this like a self tacker? It will be, yeah. Oh. I don't really want it because of its name, the knee knocker. <laughs> but this is the, one of the best parts of the boat I'm going to show you right here, right down there. Cool, your bow thruster. The bow thruster. Look at that, eh? It's even got its own cover. Okay. Shifter doesn't work, but the throttle does. A lot of room in here. 
Maybe it smells like boat. I managed to get the chain plates out here. Used to be in there. It was a pain. Had to break some of the cabinetry. Cleaned up. Oh, you can't see that. This is where everything landed in the generator area. And I pulled all the batteries out. I got nothing's more than two and a half volts, so I'm charging the ones I think might be okay. And then anything I get is a bonus. Got on the uh, phone and managed to find somebody who would make me chain plates. I think they're gonna be here in five days, so. There's my art project. And that's the good one from the other side, but we'll replace both of them just to get us going anyway. And just cleaned up the rest of the boat, really. That's where the other chain plate was. That's too dark. Too much teak in this boat. We might paint it all white. Don't tell anybody. You may have seen somebody wearing a suit like this on the internet. This is a completely different thing. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Uh, this is how I'm training for a fight. I gotta get down to the cruiser weight, so I gotta sweat all this weight off. Oh, is it hot outside? Oh, it's hot outside. How's the sweat rolling down? I ran into my shoes. <laughs> Filling my shoes. So I got digging at these holes and I found the main one up front. And I have access to the backside, which is great. So that's our issue right there. There's some ballast underneath and a big hole. So I'm going to try patch that and uh, see how good I'm at, I'm at patching. Here it is from the other side. I'm going to flare that out 12 to 1 and then put a big patch on it. Got some epoxy and fiberglass and just going to go for it. Gonna be messy here in a minute. I spared you guys the dust. It's bad. We're letting the sweatsuit dry out for a bit here. We'll come back to sanding in a minute. I have a confession to make. It's the grinding and sanding that's the worst. Sitting in a Tyvek suit. Ain't nobody having fun doing that. Definitely need the electrolytes. Thanks, Brando. Most boats end up down here after the hurricane. She looks like the bottom of the keel has been ripped off. This boat looks like it's being uh, fixed for repairs. And then there's this stand. Holy shit. So it's about to go in the hole. Got all my pieces cut out. So here's the process that I've been doing. Make a bunch of templates, different sizes. Graduating down, cut them out, stack them up. And I've been rollering them on one at a time. So far, I'm getting better, but it hasn't been so bad. This one was a little short. I did this one earlier. You can see the lines, helps me line them up, put them in the right spot. That one's a little short as well. The thickness is tough to judge. That one's done. That one just needs to be fared. I think I got the right thickness there. So that's what's, that's what it's like. Life under the tarps here. A little itchy. Definitely itchy. So there you go. That's what she looks like. After I patched all the holes. One hole there. One hole there. One hole here. Hole was good there. Giant hole about two foot across there. And the last hole, somewhere in this area, was the big old weird shaped one. But yeah, it's all good. We're ready to put it in the water other than, I guess, make sure the seacocks aren't gonna leak. 
So the, uh, the itchiness should have stopped now that I'm done most of the fiberglassing. Ready to go. So during the last hurricane, this boat fell off its stands and filled full rainwater on its side. The whole starboard side has been completely submerged with water, or at least for the bottom half. So turns out all the batteries here are toast, so we have to get new batteries. And uh, just trying to hook up shore power. This is the inverter. It's not working. Okay, so we gotta get all these batteries in the in, into your truck, and then we gotta get some new ones. What do you think? They're heavy. Just gravity. My calculations are correct. They should land right in the back of your truck. Yeah, no battery acid. Trick you on. Okay. There's some battery parkour. Stack them. Let's check on dinner before I show you what's up. Solar cooker could use some work. Maybe give it an hour or two more. New batteries are in. All our 12 volt lights are working. It's about 12 o'clock at night. And that's a wrap for now. All right, where are these land crabs out here? Just heard one. It's huge. These guys are just crawling out of the bushes. Whoa. Look inside that picture. <laughs> Mr. Krabs. Now that we have a full 12 volts on the boat, we got our power working, we can now try starting the motor. So we're just running through the diesel, trying to filter it out, making sure it's not bad. And then we're gonna give us a crank in a little bit there. That's gonna be the whole life of the boat right now. Fingers crossed. So just replacing uh, the impeller and the motor. Guardy Dental. Come on. So we're gonna fire up the diesel for the first time. The boat's still on the hard, so we have to uh, put the hose in to keep the coolant running. So, so we've been fighting with this cutlass and the cutlass housing for. Two days now, I think. Try spinning on it. Would be easy. There's four bolts here that attach this housing to there. Except one of the bolts looks like that. That's no fun. They should look like that. So we had to pry it out. It's attached to the shaft log. It doesn't want to come out. It's attached to the stuffing box and malarkey in there. So we pulled that out enough to spin it free. Now it's able to spin, but it clears this stud we gotta get the stud out and then uh, we can put a new colors bearing in and then we'll probably do a new stuffing box and uh somehow gotta get the prop off i think we're gonna get a puller anybody got time for that <laughs> yeah the spit you tried the spit it might not work kelsey doing some acid How's that treating you? Oh. Good bubbly. It's coming through, eh? So that's the um, cutlass that we took off the back of the boat. 
It's all covered in reef and yeah, it's coming out well. I guess calcium carbonate mixes with uh, the acid maybe? I don't know the science, but I think that's the science, isn't it? Probably. Doing bubbly shit, which is science. So this is the through holes we took out yesterday. They pretty well just snapped off. This is a through hole here that just broke. It's supposed to be threaded into this seacock, but no good. So now we're doing all three of the shitters. Fun shit. Oh, the end twist it. We're not gonna get it. Is that the right one? V, V. Or two. Uh oh. What's in there? Oh, it scared me. A little bit of the other day, taking apart the mast. Stripped it of all the rigging, mostly. Running rigging, standing rigging. The boom, everything's gone, so. We can have a welder now. He can uh, weld up these little holes. That's our issue. It's not that big of a deal. But now I gotta get it to the welder somehow, so the plan is to get most of the weight in the middle. Put it in this dolly and then walk it. So I was gonna tow with the truck, but I think it might be too much. Got water! We got water! Fresh water too for that. Yeah. Now we can use the shower again. Yeah. And the sink. I got so much boat runs on me. Yeah. Stoked. Already it's been three weeks and we've done so much work. Most of the time we're just so into working that we couldn't even film most of what was going on, but we've had a lot to deal with. But we've gotten this boat roughly ship shape, as some would say. We are running low on time and money, so we really just need to get this boat in the water and hope that it floats so we can sail it to uh, Curacao. Ready or not, here I come. And every sense of that phrase. <laughs> back. This view is epic. There we go. Raymarine anemometer. Speed and direction. There you are. Hey. You're blurry. You're too far away. What is this? A boat for ants?
Curacao, baby. Four days, three nights. Finally, gonna go back on land. Yeah.